All right, we're recording. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the JS Core Developers Team Weekly Sync. It's June the 24th, 2019. It's almost like FS camp, so there are people frantically preparing their stuff and not here because they're in Barcelona already and doing God knows what. But we're going to catch up anyway. Uh, and what we normally do is uh, we look at the um, crib pad, don't we? I haven't been here for a while. <laughs> look at the crib pad. Uh, if, you, if you're here, put your name in your attendees list. I think you've already, already done that. That's good. Um, and put your weekly update down if you haven't already. And we will start going through everybody who's here. And we'll go through what you've done, uh, what you've blocked on, and what's up next, uh, just so that we can sync up. Um, cool. So first up is Vashko has put an update down, but he is not here. Um, he's been doing uh, he's been doing presentations and things. Uh, Looks to be in IPFS presentations at at, at Vero University. That's cool. Um, and yeah, he did a presentation at opio.js. Uh, Reprovider work. Okay, so he's working on DHT reproviding, which is awesome. It means that once we've provided something to the DHT and told it that it's there, um, we will eventually tell the DHT again that it's that it's still there because uh, it will eventually just drop off. So it's good to have it re. Uh, Reannounced. Um, cool. Uh, so I guess this was from previous week's final presentation for OPO. Get the HTTP provider PRs ready for review. I think I've seen them. They are open but still in draft. So um, hopefully that will be ready soon. And he's been doing for intro intro tests for hybrid pub sub network. That's cool. Um, if you have any questions for Vashko, then please get in contact with him either via IRC or uh, how else. Uh, we open an issue. We open a pull request on the team management repo for this um, meetup, and you can probably comment on that and ping him if you have any questions. Uh, next up is uh, Volker VMX. What have you been up to? So my update is also a two weeks update because we didn't meet last week. Um, I haven't done that much in the. Uh, IPFS part of things, but um, I've seen that Hugo was working on a part of the Webin chunker to uh, assembly script. And I just wondered how fast the C version would be if it's directly compiled. And I read a blog post just two days before I started about how to compile C to WebAssembly without mscripten. So I was excited to just try it out. It took longer than expected because it's not as easy as it seems. Uh, but uh, the outcome is that there is no difference, um, <laughs> which is good um, and kind of expected, but still was a fun exercise. Um, I learned a, a lot of things about uh, WebAssembly. Um, then I'm currently blocked on um, making the JS IPLD stuff um, promise free and only a single weight. It's a pull request on Ellen's IPLD in memory uh, thing. Uh, yeah, to make it as single weight as finally all the other dependencies are also single weight. Once this is merged, I can upgrade everything and then, yeah, it will be nice and clean. And next is, yeah doing this and also um, potentially removing named links from DAG PB. Um, what it means is currently there you can access the, so uh, whenever you use um, IPFS and you access some file, it's not how it's actually stored in IPLD. And the question is whether we should keep the support for this in IPLD or not, because UNIXFS is actually not using it and it's a performance bottleneck. Um, but I'm checking with the Go um, IPLD team to see if they um, think it's a good idea to remove it. Um, that's all. Cool, thank you. I just figured out what module it is you can have of mine in, uh, <laughs> in exchange for BitSwap. I'm happy to take it. 
<laughs> all right. Good. And it's, and, and it's, it's almost equal size. <laughs> <laughs> almost. It, there's a little difference there. But. All right. Um, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Volker. Um, I have no questions about that. I will, I will, I guess I will transfer that module into IPRD um, and then um, I'm happy to review it as well, the pull request, uh, when I get a sec. Um, what's next? Dirk, you're up next. Would you like to uh, give us your update? Yeah, so last week I was at IPFS Team Week and so <clears throat> most of this is from the previous week. Um, so I fixed a couple of pinning bugs in Go IPFS. Uh, so I've been looking through the, the code quite a bit to uh, to work on the JS pinning stuff. Um, I created an issue about uh, blocks. So <clears throat> so we have this issue where we're sharing on BitSwap some stuff that should really just be internal, the pinning stuff. And this has a pretty severe performance uh, degradation effect when we're when we're doing anything really, but, but particularly on some DHT tests. So, um, so yeah, we should be able to improve the performance of basically everything if we can, we can figure out how to do that. So I've written up an issue about it. I'd love to get some, some people's feedback. Um, so then, yeah, so now I'm working on improving pinning performance. It's pretty complicated. There's uh, a lot of things to think about there because <clears throat> it affects uh, Node.js, the browser, you know, works differently and you know, there's some trade-offs there between whether we're going to cache stuff in memory, uh, whether we cache stuff on disk. So I think I'm going to write up an issue about the various trade-offs and ask people for feedback before continuing with that. And yeah, the last thing is, uh, as you guys know, I'm, I'm now taking over as lead maintainer for the BitSwap implementation. And I know that um, in Goland, they've been adding some things to BitSwap, like sessions. So I don't know like how that all like how this fits in with uh, kind of JavaScript priorities, but I just wanted to sort of check in on that. If there's a roadmap. Cool, thank you, Doug. Um, yeah, the roadmap. I think uh, there was a section of Team Week that you missed out on that will uh, that was to a whole bunch of things to do with like org restructuring and reprioritizing um, that we'll have to bring you up to speed on um, and it will eventually make it out um, or it will be communicated out to the public um, pretty soon. I think camp will take precedence for now, but um, yeah, in terms of your priorities and, and things, um, I just, yeah, just be aware that that's, that's kind of happening and everything's kind of up in the air at the moment. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Um, Otherwise, the issue you were talking about, about um, bit swap and that being provided to the DHT, uh, that sounds like a bad thing. And if we have time at the end of the call, maybe we could all discuss what your proposal is. And yeah, yeah, there's an issue there. So Vashko, he, um, he added a couple of comments and then I just wanted to you know, run it by you guys and see if- uh, Okay, well, well let's, let's see if, if we have time because there's only four of us. But, um, oh, you want to talk about it now? Yeah, well, let's let Jacob go first, and I can I'll quickly share an update, and then we can maybe hop back to it if we have. That's good. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. Uh, if is there any other questions to Dirk before we move on? Okay, uh, Jacob is up. What's going on? Yeah, this will be quick. So I was out most of last week working on IPFS camp stuff. Do more of that this week, and go to IPFS camp and. Then I created a PR for the delegated routing support in JSIPFS. So that adds in the configuration for that. Um, got some comments back from Dirk, so we'll probably move the addresses for the um, delegate nodes into the config so that we can update those um, and make that configurable for people. And I'm going to, uh, Michael sent over the instructions for getting people being able to run their own service in Go. So I'm gonna test those against a local install um, at some point this week, and then uh, get those updated in the module so that we can make sure that people are able to run their own services and not everybody's depending on the preload nodes. So we don't take them down. That is it for me, any questions?
Uh, I guess I have a question about the implementation and um, thanks for sending the PR. I'm just wondering if uh, because they are currently shared on the preload nodes uh, and not split out into their own as their own service, we've got two basically two different services running on the same machines uh, and if one should get really busy then it takes down both of them and that's really bad for like if everyone starts using the delegated routing and that causes them to fall over there's no backup which is the, like the you know the preloading stuff that's that's right that's already there uh, and i'm just wondering if we don't i haven't had a chance to look on the, at the pr to be honest but um so is it is it basically uh, configured by default to use um, content routing or? Yeah, so if you, it'll enable content and peer routing uh, by default, it'll turn those on. So yeah, if you yeah, do any fine peers or anything like that, yeah. if you have a DHT enabled, it will attempt to run through your DHT first. Um, if it fails to find what it's looking for, then it will reach out to the delegated routing. Okay. So, but because we don't have the DHT enabled by default, yes, having them as by default as people right. eat, uh, it's going to cause problems. Um, yeah, I think having our own service, having individual services running would be helpful. Um, I think also encouraging people to run their own for their infrastructure, um, but obviously that is going to be dependent for, not everybody's going to be able to do that. Yeah. Okay, so what? So I'm thinking this will go out before uh, before camp. Um, I just don't want like everyone in the world to start um, using that, and for the experience at camp not to be really good. But what we could do instead is to just inform people how to set that up and have it, you know, ready to go. And then if people want to use it in their workshops at camp, then they can configure it. Yeah, we and that. then we only then we potentially only we have a f like far fewer amount of people using that, uh, and so it might be less likely to fall over. Do we want to throw it behind like an experimental flag or something for right now, or just make it configurable? Is it well? Yeah, that's. I guess that's my question. Is it can it be configurable? Yeah, so, so we could actually just have it go through, and um, if you have, we could have it so that if you actually have what we're talking about doing is adding delegated so in your config you'd have addresses delegates mm -hmm. and if you have any in there then we can just have it run it if you don't put any in there um then we won't have it run so people will just have to go in and pop the preload multi-adders in there yeah we could do that that i think well i don't know i'm interested in your opinion but that sounds like a good idea for camp and and until it, they get separated out into two like the preload nodes and the delegated routing nodes. Yeah, I think really, yeah. Not having those turned on by default, not having everything turned on by default is good. <laughs> um, and then having the nodes just configurable and like here are a list of resources we recommend you spin up your own, but if you absolutely must, here are some that we have. Um, yeah, just note that support is gonna be degrading if the whole world is trying to use them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And I, like, I just, I just want to make like if people are using them in their workshops, then that's that's rad. But there's, you know, it's, it's much restricted um, numbers of people using it. Yeah, and one the advantage too, if I can get the uh, just some clear instructions on getting the go one, then if people need to run um, their own uh, delegated routing nodes for the workshop, then they would be able to do that with go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that would be rad. Cool. cool. Okay. Let's do that then. That sounds that sounds like a good. Good way forward. Um, I have a question about that. Um, it seems like a lot of the time we we specify hosts directly, like you know, host one, host two, host three. Uh, I don't I don't know if I know enough about load balancing, but is it possible to uh, just give a DNS address and it'll like the DNS will like load balance for us and it'll choose like you know round robin or whatever, so that we don't have to specify the exact number of hosts because that way we can kind of scale it up and down. The biggest thing would be, 
dealing with knowing who you're contacting and routing that because a lot of times you'd have to have if the biggest challenge I think with that is having continuity in the peer that you're dialing so if you hit a load balancer either that is a sharded peer uh, which I don't think we have support for right now um, or it's somehow able to determine like, okay, you coming here, this is a specific peer you're dialing because when we dial out, we expect that we're dialing a specific peer. And if we hit the load balancer and get a different peer, we're going to shut down. Right. I see what you're saying because, uh, it has a, a specific ID. Right. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. Just... Ideally being able to shard peers behind load balancers would be, uh, super nice. Yeah. The, um, so for, for like the preload stuff, it, when you add or cat something from IPFS, it will send like an API request to, well, it sends it to the first one at the moment, but there's a PR open to just um, round robin them. But it's just a HTTP API request to, um, to those preload nodes. And that, that in itself could be, like it could be DNS or, or load balance to any number of peers, but we would still have to specify um, Every peer uh, in the list of peer in, in list of uh, in the Bootstrap nodes as well to connect to because they, we actually have to be connected to each one of those peers to start receiving their content over the Bitswap. Uh, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. So that was Jacob. Uh, uh, any other questions for Jacob? All right, sweet. Um, so, okay, I'm next. Mine will be hopefully pretty quick as well. Um, last week was Team Week, um, which was uh, amazing. <laughs> so much, so much content. Uh, so many things learned, and um, and like I said, some reprioritizing, restructuring, and things um, towards the end of the week, um, which will which will all kind of uh, come to the forefront. I think after after camp is out of the way, um, but now it is uh, it is like finishing off final prep for, for camp. Uh, there's still a whole bunch of things to do. Um, like we want to get a JS IBFS release out the door because there are camp courses that depend on the new release, which uh, adds some, some bit of pressure. Um, so I, I used to get that done. Um, the big things there were, um, there's IPNS, so uh, name resolve um, with uh, DNS, um, IPNS, DNS IPNS links. Um, and uh, and then there was the delegated routing, which is now kind of also in the progress in in the pipe. Should be hopefully ready really soon, which we've already talked about. Um, and then the third thing was the kind of DHT and whether or not that should go in. Um, and um, I was slightly considering this morning whether we should just add it in and set it to be DHT client mode by default, but not. Um, not full mode um but yeah i uh, i slightly held back on the whole getting the dht ready considering the issues and problems that we've been having with the the gateway and the degraded performance and it, it doesn't feel like the right time to be introducing a new dht implementation even if i was 100 percent confident it, it is completely right so um i'm thinking let's not Let's not do it for camp. We'll have delegated routing, which will be um, hopefully almost as good, uh, and um, and let's get it in the next release instead, because because uh, there are fires that are still still there, and I wouldn't want to aggravate them in any way. <laughs> so yeah, the, that's my current thinking. Uh, I have to finish off my core course A. I, it's nearly done. Um, the slides are good and long. <laughs> Well, they're taking a long time because I'm I'm uh, handcrafting them, um, but they're nearly done. And then the I'm the DRI for the deep dives, so they are they are also almost all ready to go. So um, we're, we're on track relatively. Um, cool. Uh, and that's me. Any questions? All right. Cool. Um, there is no cross team updates. Uh, there are some people away uh so Vashko is still away uh next two weeks till 12 okay you're back again 
uh, sorry, Volker's back again, and uh, Dirk is away. Okay, that's uh, okay. That's good to know too. All right, um, cool. Should do, do, we've got a few? We've probably got five to ten minutes left. If, would you like to talk about the bit swap? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so maybe everyone can take two minutes just to read the issue that I've linked to from my notes. Yeah. Yeah, we had the same problem when um, when preloading was first, or well, I had the same problem when preloading was first first added, and then like I realized that there was a whole load of things that we didn't actually want to be on the gateway, uh, the sort of preload nodes that are internal to your node. So it just meant that the, that option got propagated in quite a few places. Um, yeah. So. Um... So that's one way we could go. We, we could also do the same thing. So basically, the issue is that we don't want to provide uh, blocks that are used internally. We don't want to provide them to BitSwap. Um, so one way would be to kind of pass an option uh, wherever we're, we're doing that. Another way would be to create like a special instance of uh, IPLD and a special offline version of the tag component. Um, and then in the pinner, we just use that offline DAG component so that it knows that it doesn't send any of that stuff out to the network. So that's kind of the question, I guess, is whether whether that solution makes sense to you guys. That sounds pretty sensible to me. Um, yeah, Vashka just had some concerns um, about like it just felt a little weird to him to be like creating two versions of stuff one offline and one online that's how yeah. they do it in the go code but yeah if you guys are okay with it i think i'll just go ahead and make a pr um i think it also sounds good in the perspective of the future of ipld so just um so um the plan is that the i don't know if it's the next version or the version after even <laughs> is that um really ipld is not really responsible for how things are stored so it's rather you pass in some put function some get function and then it would totally make sense to have basically two instances because the the actual ipld won't do much io it would rather you pass in the functions you want to use and then it totally makes sense to have one using bit swap and one using just uh, local things or yeah so therefore it totally makes sense yeah that's what i was thinking that it like IPLD doesn't need to know about the internals, right? So probably we should just keep it in an external place. What kind of overhead would you get with having an, an another instance of IPLD? What does what does it mean? Like, is it just a bit more memory because there's another instance, or is there some like, is it? Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty negligible, I think. Yeah, I also wouldn't expect much. Um, much uh, to, to expect it to be a resource intensive i think it's i guess we'll see <laughs> i guess we'll see but i but i don't expect any any major problems so um one thing that does come to mind is ipld formats and lazy loading them if we create another instance is it going to have to lazy load another format again probably right yeah, probably. Um, but it's for the for the internal stuff. We don't really need support. So, so what does internal mean? So, does internal mean just for like um, 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 keeping track of things? Right. Because then it probably will be CBOR anyway, only yeah, right. It will probably be our default no uh, no types anyway, right? Yeah. yeah they will probably just to create this instance with just statically or like statically uh, loaded seaboard and you will be good yeah that's a good point yeah i'll make sure when i do the pr i'll check you know i'll check what happens internally make sure it's not not unnecessarily loading stuff i think the ipld like with the like volker you're saying about it just taking a get and a get and a set and i think like the block service you give it it only uses get and set already I'm pretty sure I've passed like a mock <laughs> block service to it that just just has a get and a set 
Like there's no, that's not a, a big change uh, to what's already happening. Yes, correct. Yeah, but 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 there's still this real like this this dependency between like block service bit swap and IPFS uh, repo is still kind of like yeah historically grown and I think super ugly. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> um, yeah, but this will hopefully go away in the future. Um, cool. Okay, I think that's uh, that gives me enough to go. On. I'll make a PR and I'll I'll send you guys as reviews. Yeah. Does it have any um, repercussions for like um, locking and, and stuff if we're using a separate block? Good set? question. I'll uh, I'll make sure to take that into account. But I think yeah. uh, the pending stuff has its own locking anyway, so I think it should be okay. I mean, so like on the face of it, it sounds it sounds really sensible. I'm, it's just the I, I guess I just want to know what the where the potential problems could be, like what, you know, is it going to use up 10 times memory? Is it going to cause problems like, like we just discussed, you know, the locking or whatever, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess see, get, get in there and get your hands dirty and see how, um, see how it goes. Okay, sounds good. Cool, okay. Um, sweet, is there anything else anyone wants to, say or talk about or shall we shall we call it a day next time i see jacob it will be at ipfs <laughs> yes potentially all of our viewers all, all of them <laughs> cool uh, all right well um have fun uh, all all of you people and um uh, until next week, uh, have a nice, have a nice time and uh, happy IPFSing. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>